Good morning, church. It's Thursday of Passion Week, and we are going to tackle another Isaiah passage. This time it's chapter 40, verse 1 through 8, and we have pastors Jacob and Hugh joining us. All right, this is God's word. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up, and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, Cry, and I say, What shall I cry? All flesh is grass, and all its beauty is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades. When the breath of the Lord blows on it, surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Amen. 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 Nice. What's so nice about this, Pastor? He wants to start us off? (laughs) No, because this is where we get the, uh, you know, what we say after we read the scripture. Mm. Mm-hmm. Any other uh, thoughts we should have as we're reflecting on this? This, this? this can be perceived as initially at least obscure to our listeners, so let, let's help them out a bit. How, mm. how should we process this? Well, as the other passages in our devotion started off with certain dark or uh, difficult tone for, for sinners to hear, mm-hmm. uh, these words start with, well, just as the first word, it, very comforting. But it, it is a word of comfort that comes... After the bad news, uh, in, in chapter 39, we, we hear of how Hezekiah has shown the Babylonian envoy all the treasure houses of, of Judah, to which Isaiah says, what did you show them? And Hezekiah said, I show them everything. everything. <laughs> and he prophesied, therefore said, uh, these Babylonians will eventually come and exile you out of this country, to which Hezekiah's weird response is, well, this is good as long as... At, at, at the very least, my lifetime, it's going to be pretty comfortable. Right. And, but then there's going to be a great exile after his, uh, his generation. Um, and, and so there, there's a face of exile that's really threatened or promised to the people of Judah because of their disobedience to the Lord. And yet, even in place of exile, that is sure to happen. And even as, as this voice cries in the wilderness, a place of death, a, a desert um, of, of, of difficulty and suffering, God speaks words of comfort and peace. War is done, and, and this gift or grace that God gives, as, as he says in, in verse 2, uh, she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins, like the way Apostle Paul talks about how when sin increased, grace abounded all the more. And so, uh, there's the bad news of what's going to happen, trouble, difficulty, exile, and yet there's a promise in the assurance that there will be great comfort for God's people. Mm. That is encouraging. Uh, Pastor Hugh, uh, what what are some other thoughts you had on this passage? Um, um, oh, yeah. yeah and how does this minister to you personally? I think definitely I just want to start off by mentioning and tagging on Pastor Jacob's idea is comfort, a lot of comfort. It's not just comfort, O Israel, but it's comfort, comfort. I think Pastor Andrew did Isaiah 6, there where it says, holy, holy, holy. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think, you know, in modern days, we when we want to emphasize things, say, we, uh, when we want to emphasize certain idea, we like, we say, for real, <laughs> or <laughs> no, we're seriously, or things like that. But they're a way of emphasizing certain ideas by repetition. So it's a, it's 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 a serious comfort. It's, a, it's some good comfort mm-hmm. here. God is offering a, a lot of comfort. So for those of you who are going through something hard, or suffering, or you know, I I hope today's I don't know, session can be a comforting message or a rem- comforting reminder for you that God has. Uh, God's a God of comfort, and and He's not shy with His comfort comforts abundantly but yeah and that and i think his comfort is, is, is follows uh, starts from verse three he says he himself is coming the lord is coming 
is coming back to his people as a king. And a voice is announcing. It's like, what's the movie that I just watched, Dune? When the royal uh, figures come, they will make sound, like instruments will play. That kind of, you know, that signifies that some serious or important figures coming yeah, in. I didn't watch Dune yet. Oh, oh <laughs> didn't? Yeah. Oh, what? You're missing out. What? The, the, num- the second one, right? The second yeah. One? Okay. It was good. I slept at 2 a.m., but no, it was worth I, it. I tried, to, I tried to watch the first one, but it was uh-huh. hard to actually finish. So oh, I see. I'm still working through it. Okay, so I'll stop that. Okay, <laughs> no more. But let's say, uh, you know, when you're watching movies or, oh, like, you know, fire trucks coming, siren. Like, it tells you it's urgent. It's something important, something serious. Here is an invisible voice that's proclaiming the arrival of a king. So we should make way. So back in the days when kings come, they will make highway, make new way for a king to come. Uh, symbolizing there's nothing that can stop the king's arrival, king's mm. coming. Lord himself is coming here. What can stop it? Mountains will bow. Valleys will fill themselves. Nature will cave to, you know, nothing can stop God from coming to comfort his people, to reclaim his lost people. Um, so I, I think that's comforting. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I can share more, but anything that you guys yeah, want. Yeah, as I'm looking at this, so I'm asking, like, I'm asking the question. So, what are we supposed to be comforted by? And I mean, I, I agree with everything you guys shared, but in the end, right? Um, if if our comfort is in this earthly life, there's no way mm-hmm. that this passage offers comfort because in the end, it says that everything withers, mm-hmm. the grass withers, the flower fades, right? Yeah. And uh, it says. <laughs> It says that the people are grass, right? The Lord blows on it. The breath of the Lord blows on it. Surely the people are grass. That, that, that means we're, you know, as life as we know it, it's going to be, you know, fading, right? Yeah. It's going to be gone. Uh, but, right, the word of our God will stand forever. And mm-hmm. if, if we do not find comfort in the Lord and his word, this passage offers no no hope or comfort for us, and so I think it reorients it reorients our hearts yeah. essentially, right? That, that's what I, I see from from this passage, and to me that's comforting because I I've you know I have experienced uh, the Lord's great. I've seen my own fallenness, um, and I I know that surely you know if my hope is in in who I am, <laughs> that's surely no hope at all, right? And so it, it's good for me to anchor. My hope in the Lord, and that in that sense, this passage offers this great comfort for me personally. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and in in light of Isaiah's context, right, we, we can't trust in kings, we can't trust in politicians, we can't rely upon our pastors or family members to be the source of comfort, because like as as you mentioned, we are like grass; yeah. we will come and go. Yeah, we're gonna disappoint because we are frail and and uh, we we we're, we're sinful. And and so it's it's great as as we hear this voice crying out in the wilderness, we we should hopefully be reminded or or go to the New Testament and realize this is the fulfillment that's found in John the Baptist. He's the voice in the wilderness crying out, mm. "Make straight way for the Lord." And and so Isaiah here, as he's talking about comfort for his people, we are living in that reality of that ultimate comfort that is found in Jesus Christ who is the very glory of God and grace upon grace, where in him we find comfort in this age with the greater assurance for the age to come, that we have peace with God, we're reconciled to God, we're loved by God, we're adopted by him as sons and daughters of God, that no matter what our circumstances may be, we have a God who is all-powerful and mighty standing for us, who does not treat us according to the sins that we have committed, but gives us grace upon grace. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. Thank you for those thoughts, brothers. Anything else you wanted to add? Um, just to yeah, just to add a little bit more. Um, reflecting on Passion Week, like PJ said, Jesus is the fulfillment of you know coming of God Himself as a King, mm. and, and nobody was able to stop the baby from coming. Herod couldn't stop him. When Jesus was riding on the donkey, nobody stopped him. When Jesus was carrying the cross, nobody stopped him. When he resurrected, nobody was able to stop him. When he was going back to the Father, nobody was able to stop him. Our King Jesus, whatever he does, nobody can stop him. 
So I think we can find comfort in that. Is we have a king that he's unstoppable in anything and everything that he does. Mm-hmm. And I think that's for me. That's how I've been as I'm preparing this podcast. That's what I thought about. That's how I counseled my heart that I have a king who he's unstoppable. My, my anxiety can stop him. My depression can stop him. What, what whatever that may be. Mm. So yeah, I think I just want to to share a little bit of what I've been thinking about. Yeah. Oh, that's great. Yeah, I appreciate that thought. All right. Well, let me uh, offer a prayer for our church as we close out our time today. Father, we are truly uh, comforted by this passage, a passage that promises uh, that our King will come and uh, nothing will stop Him. He's our unstoppable King. Your kingdom is unstoppable. And Father, we're called to place our comfort, our hope, uh, in in Jesus, who is our King, the King of Kings and Lord of Lords, Lord, uh, may we be reminded that our comfort is not to be placed um, in ourselves or in this earthly life we live. That all things will fade because they are like grass that withers, flowers that fade. But uh, if we place our hope in You, if our comfort is found in You, then there is great encouragement for us today. So help us to persevere in that reality as we trust in You. Lord, uh, empower us to live well today for your glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.